Okay, I want to talk about web workers. Now I've got uh, a little bit of thunder and rain going on in the background here. Hopefully that's not coming through too much in the audio. Um, but let's just jump right into this. So web workers were introduced uh, quite a while ago actually as a way to offload some of the uh, more intense processing tasks that you may have to do on a web page. JavaScript is a single threaded programming language, which means it gets one process, there's one thread, everything that happens, happens on that single thread. So it can't do multiple things at the same time. Web Workers was introduced as a way to address that. So you can actually have another JavaScript file that runs and you can start that JavaScript file up on a different thread, have it running in the background on this other thread, and then have it report back when it completes a task that you're asking it to complete. So anything that's really processor intensive, uh, you want to do calculations for animations or you want to fetch data, things like that you can put onto the web worker. Now the only thing that this web worker script can't do is it doesn't have access to the DOM. So you can't do anything with the window, you can't do anything with the document, you can't do anything with um, the parent object. So we can do that. Now we do have access to the XML HTTP request object. We do have access to the navigator object, the location object, uh, set timeout, set interval. Uh, if you want to do fetch, that's going to work. So there's a lot of these other common tasks that you can put on the web workers. You just, you can't do things that interact with the web page basically. Uh, the way it works is you're allowed to pass, me pass messages back and forth between your main script and the web worker script. So let's jump in and take a look and see how this is going to happen. So I have uh, a pre tag right here. This is where I'm going to write my output from the web worker. And the way you create it, very simply, you just say new worker, capital W on the worker, and then you give the name of the file. This will start up this script. So that script is now sitting there waiting for us to use. We can add event listeners to it. So we're going to listen for messages to come back from the web worker. We can listen for errors that come back from the web worker. So add a message listener, add an error listener. And the way we talk to it, the way we pass information is with post message. So really, it's just those two things. Add event listener, listening for the message and post message to send data to it. Now the worker itself, it's going to be able to send back messages using the same method, post message. It's going to have an event listener listening for the message event as well. So those two lines of code, add event listener and post message, those are the two things that you do both in your main file as well as in the web worker. So in my code here, what have I done? I've created the web worker. I've got this JavaScript file we'll look at in a second. I've added the event listeners, and then I've passed this string over to the web worker. Now, when you post message, it doesn't have to be a string. You can have an object, like a JSON object or something like that. You can pass uh, typed arrays or blobs or file objects as well. Um, this is actually, if you're looking to do deep copies of objects, this is one of the ways that you can do it. You can pass objects over and copies get made of those objects. Okay, so we're um, now going to add a click listener onto this text as well to call a second method. So post message, we're passing this string, and then if I click on that message, I'm going to call post message again and pass a different string over there. Worker messaged, this is my function that runs when the message event happens. EV, that's my message event it's got a property called data. It will always have a property called data. That really is, if I'm inside the web worker, this is the data. This is the data. Whatever I pass over, that's the data. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to write out whatever that data is inside of this pre-tag right up here. So that's what we get here. When we reload the page, this message is being written out by my web worker. This string was being passed back as the data from my web worker, and then I'm writing it out on the page. So, okay, so let's take a look inside there, and we'll look for add event listener and post message inside there. Here it is. So, self, 
Now this is a term that you use inside of web workers. It's talking about the script itself. So self, add event listener, message. This is the function right here, This all this code. This is just the function that runs whenever my web worker receives a message. And here's that message that I wrote out in the console. Web worker started with data, get started. Web worker started with data, eb.data. So data, that was that get started string that I passed in. So there's the console message being written out. Now I'm just putting this into a variable. I didn't have to, I just did. And then switch case statement, I'm looking at the data to see what it is. Now I've got get started being passed in the first time. And if that happens, self, once again, talking about the web worker post message, it's going to send this message back to my web worker page, the script that called this. Web worker started, that's the data being passed back, and that's what I'm writing out here. In the case of other, if that's the string being passed in, if that was the message that I passed over, I'm going to send back other task. So let's take a look at that. Refresh, make sure we got the latest copy. If I click on this, there it is, other task. That's what got passed back. And this message up here wrote out, web worker started with data, other. So there we are, going back and forth, just passing these strings. Now, that's not very useful, so let's, let's do a little bit more. Let's create one called data. Come back into here. So in addition to passing other, we're going to call on our worker and we're going to send it a message called data. Now, this doesn't have to be a string. This could be something else. This could be an object. We can pass an object with do fetch. There we are. So I've created an object with a property called do and a value called fetch. So I'm going to pass that over. Inside of here, uh, so data, in this case, um, here, actually, let's comment all that out. ev.data.do. This is the object that we created over here. Do, and the value is going to be fetch. Again, not a keyword, just something that I made up. Now, this case is going to run if fetch is what is in there. And I'm going to do a fetch for this URL. When it returns, we'll take the response and convert it. If you haven't uh, worked with fetch before, um, I have videos, a whole playlist on doing Ajax and fetch calls and working with promises and what I'm doing here. I'll put a link to that playlist in the description. Okay, so we're fetching this page. This is giving us some data from this URL, converting it into a JSON object. Data will be that JSON object. And then what I want to do is I want to send that data object back over to the other page, just to show that we can do more than just strings here. Okay, and we should always put a catch on there. Okay, so we have our fetch set up. If the string fetch is passed through inside of a property called do, and here let's do, oh no, we'll leave it as that. Okay. Oh, there we are, we got an error. So let's comment out these other ones because we're not dealing with the strings anymore. Uh, message, click, do, fetch. Instead of output, let's just say document.body. So click anywhere on the page, and we're going to call this post message. There we are. So we click on the page, and there it is. There's the object that came back. So just to confirm this, inside of here, we'll say console.log about to do the fetch for the data. 
So that should appear when we first click on the page. Then it does the actual fetch. And over inside of here, worker messaged. So when the message comes back, ev.data, that is going to be our data object that we got. But we want to convert this into uh, something that's readable. We don't just want to see object, object, object written over there. So let's convert this into a string. So json.stringify data null to, there we are, refresh, and there we are. There's the message about to do the fetch for the data. So I clicked on the page. That meant my click listener ran. We posted the message over to the web worker. The web worker then extracted that do property from the object whose value was the string fetch. We looked at that. It was fetch. We wrote out the fact that we're about to do the fetch. That was the console log statement here. And then we did the fetch. When it came back and we converted it back into JSON, we did post message data, which sends it back to the page that started this script up, which is our web worker.html. And we listened for the message that came back from that page, called the function worker messaged. Here it is. Extract the data, and then we converted the data into from an object into a string. So we could write that out. And there is all of our data that came back. And we did that on a separate script that was loaded in its own thread as a web worker. So don't get confused with web workers and service workers. Service workers is another topic altogether, which is sort of the updated replacement for app cache. I will be doing another video on service workers. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Uh, if you found this useful, please share it. And as always, thanks for watching.